Hey, what's up, Internet? My name is Dan Fletcher. Today we are going to continue learning Ruby in our Let's Learn Ruby on Code Academy series. Um, so yeah, where we left off yesterday was the Zen of Ruby. Today we're going to refactor some more stuff. Um, I'm going to try to get through this a little faster than some of these other videos. Because uh, these videos are just taking a long time. A lot of them are 30 to 40, sometimes more than 40 minutes. Um, so I might... Uh, I think I'm going to break the tr tradition of reading all the side sort of like out loud other than maybe some of the introductory stuff um, and maybe just try to jump into the code a little faster. Maybe that'll make these videos uh, shorter. I definitely don't want to break them up kind of like in the middle of a, of a lesson. All right, so let's just jump in um so I'll, we'll just start with reading the the intro what we're gonna or sorry what we'll be fixing uh we're gonna reinforce our knowledge of ruby best practices by refactoring some existing code uh, as mentioned refactoring is the process by which we improve a code structure appearance and or performance without modifying its overall behavior the code in the editor is a ruby method first n primes that takes a number n generates a list of first n prime numbers unfortunately our poor author hasn't yet mastered all the tools available in ruby but we can fix that okay so it just wants us to run hopefully Oh, no, I think it just wants us to click next. Uh, uh, so it looks like for this, it just wants us to refactor line 6 and uh, 10 to use single line if and unless. Um, so we'll just start with the unless. So we should be able to... Um, well, for one, we should be able to use an implicit return. So in n must be an integer period unless n is a integer and I don't think we need the return there um, so yeah this one just actually you're just gonna cut and paste it and remove and see if that works so maybe because we're doing this one line unless and one line if maybe we do need the return Oh, yeah, so it's, it, it actually probably just has more to do with, there's multiple code paths in here, uh, so Ruby just wants us to be explicit, um, rather than assuming that we actually wanted to implicitly return here, which kind of makes sense. Ah, and so, maybe... Maybe I was wrong with that last one. There's one return statement in this code we can change from explicit to implicit. Find the unnecessary return. Keep. Uh. I maybe it's like maybe it's this one. I mean, there's only two, so it can only be one or the other. Maybe it's expecting both. I wonder if it didn't work last time because we had that extra return statement on the bottom. No. It will always automatically return the value of the last expression it evaluates. Well, in this situation, all three lines will always evaluate so we don't need a return there but I mean it already didn't have a return there run okay so <laughs> I didn't actually have to do anything you just had to click run uh, cool oh well that was a really fast lesson 
Okay, well, I'm just thinking... Uh, this next lesson, I think we can crush out pretty, pretty quick. Um, I want to try to keep this video... Let's see, like, I want to aim for about 20 minutes, so let's, let's just kind of keep going. Uh, so this lesson's about blocks, procs, and lambdas. Uh, it says, you know this, we learned a bit about blocks in loops and iterators and methods, blocks, and sorting. We said earlier that a block is like a nameless method, but it's not quite true. We'll get to actual nameless methods called lambdas later in this lesson. A Ruby block is just a bit of code that can be executed. Block syntax uses either do end or curly braces like so. Um, and we've already seen kind of this... Uh, blocks can be combined with methods like dot each and dot times to execute an instruction for each element in a collection like a hash or array. So let's do a little review. Uh, use times block to put the string I'm a block five times. It's not letting me... Really? Okay, just refresh the page. Um, when in doubt. <laughs> Turn it off and on again. Uh, puts the. I don't know, I guess actually what I want is the string. Ah, what was it again? I'm a block. Exclamation. Uh, dot times. And then. How do we use times again? I think it takes. Uh, I actually forget how to use it. Oh, right. Just did a uh, quick Google. Yeah, we want five dot times, and then uh, what we get is our little, whoops, uh, block syntax, and we'll just say the, I don't know, I guess it doesn't really matter what, what we call the item. We'll just say I, and we're going to put... I'm a block, like that, and cool. Next. Okay, so this one's uh, showing us a new uh, method that we have on arrays called collect. Um, basically, it, it's just like calling dot each only instead of mutating uh, the original array, meaning we actually uh, modify the original array. Um, it returns a copy uh, so in this example you know my nums um, multiplying everything by two um, or actually is that what that I can't remember no I think this is a to the power uh, anyway it doesn't matter um, doing the same thing as uh, a dot each so if you're to if you're to save this into a variable you'd get this array but my nums would actually still be one, two, three. Uh, so what it's asking us to do is make a new variable called double fibs. And we're gonna set it to equal our Fibonacci numbers on line one dot collect. And we're gonna say for each number, uh, we wanna take that number and multiply it by two and so double fibs should be the you know every single number double, uh, times two but fibs uh, shouldn't shouldn't be touched undefined local variable or method fib oh fibs did I I think so, right? This spelled it wrong, I guess. Cool. Uh, and just to prove what's going on, let's put double, or I guess print, print double fibs, and everything's doubled. And if we print fibs, we should see that it actually. Uh, 
do I get it on? Oh, maybe that's what puts does. There we go. So double fibs and fibs is unmodified. Uh, so this one's probably worth reading, actually. Learning to yield. Why do some methods accept a block and others don't? It's because methods that accept blocks have a way of transferring control from the calling method to the block and back again. We can build this into the methods we define by using the yield keyword. Um, so yeah, it's really just asking us to kind of read this and run it. Um, so we have a function, and I'm guessing because we use the yield, that's what gives us this block syntax. Uh, I'm, st I'm actually not quite pic picturing the order of how all of this happens, so let's just run it. Ah, so basically whatever you put between these braces is what happens here. Okay. Um, so let's try yielding with parameters. Also probably worth actually reading through. Um, you can also pass parameters to yield. Check out the example in the editor. Um, so we have a, f a function that takes an argument called name. We yield and yield can take arguments. On line nine, we call the yield. Oh, sorry. Okay, on line nine, we call the yield name method and supply the argument Eric for the name parameter. Since yield name has a yield statement, we will also need to supply a block. Yield name Eric for each n puts my name is n. So I'm guessing. In this situation, n is for each yield. So for the first yield, it'll probably say my name is Kim. And then for the second yield, we're going to use the parameter that we pass in, which is this. So n will be Eric. So in the method, let's yield, which is the first. And then here we yielded Kim. So and we said for each and so my name is Kim. Uh, we're in between yields, and then my name is Eric. Block complete back in the method. So now it wants me to call your name with your name as a parameter. I don't know your name, but I can put in my name. As my name is. Make sure to pass in a block that puts my name. I mean, it already is doing that, isn't it? I don't understand what it's asking me to do. Oh, I see. It literally it wants me to just add a new line. Um, maybe it doesn't want me to do the end bit, so I'll just, I'm just sort of guessing what it's asking us to do here. Uh, no, if we want the variable, it has to take that. Okay. Cool, that was it. Oh. Okay, so it just basically wants us to try this ourselves by writing a function or method um, that takes a parameter, yields to a block, and then we're going to call that function and we're going to use it to double any number we want. So we'll just say def double takes a parameter num and we will yield how do you spell yield again yield to num and 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 then i'll call my double function with uh we'll just say two and then for 
n will n times 2. Make sense? So we have our function takes a number, and then the yield is basically saying, hey, this whatever happens inside the block will pass this value into here. And then this is where we uh, perform our logic on that uh, value. So in this case, num is 2. Yield injects that number back in here. And then we're just saying 2 times 2. Uh, so that puts us about 15 minutes. Um, we're about halfway through this lesson. I, I kind of don't like stopping in the middle of, of a lesson, but um, I mean, the videos have just been getting really long. Uh, so I think I'm going to cut it here and uh, we'll pick up where we left off in the next video. So uh, thanks for sticking around. My name is Dan Fletcher. See you next time. Cheers.